Alright guys, what's going on? Today I've taken the liberty to talk to you about something that caught my eye when I was going through Eurogamer. I came across this article and after I was finished reading it, I came to the conclusion that gaming community could face another Gamergate type movement. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the article can be found on Eurogamer with the headline First Women Only Esports Car Racing Competition Announced. You can read the article at Eurogamer, but I, but I will be touching on a few points that I found to be quite interesting. The article says, the time-limited competition which launches on Steam this autumn will donate a percentage of its revenue to female-focused charities and aims to provide a supportive, female-friendly environment that encourages more women to play esports while drawing attention to the often hidden role of women in racing and automotive in automotive history female friendly environment in other words a safe space same to those that have been cropping up on university campuses in the west where the greatest threat known to women are not allowed to enter men this sort of approach creates segregation in a community and in this case is gaming. Gaming has always been inclusive with only the best making their way in esports and professional gaming. Creating a women only esport event means that women will be allowed to enter the competition based on their gender and not their merit and performance, something I think any self-respecting woman would disagree with. And stronger candidates may not be allowed to enter the tournament if they have, well, a penis. Now picture this for a moment. Imagine there was a men only esport event that prohibited women from entering just so they will not be bullied or harassed by men. First off, feminists all around the globe would lose their temper and will actively participate to push the sponsors to boycott the event. Second, you are trying to take care of the issue here by isolating the problem to protect potential victims. The problem of harassment will still be there. Everybody faces some sort of harassment and bullying when it comes to online and gaming. Everyone gets harassed. It's not gender based issue at some, as some people would say. Men suffer harassment as well and in some cases it's worse than what women face online. Now, now this is where I will list problems I have with this approach. Number one. You're making the assumption that all harassment is done by men, which is not true. If you see the drama unfold sometimes on Twitter between female gamers, or eagles as, I, as some like to call themselves, you will realize that women harass other women too. Occasionally women harass men. And if you do believe that men are the ones that harass women, then I'm sorry to say you're sexist and please take your misandrist attitude off my YouTube channel. Number 2. Taking women out of the equation is not going to solve anything. For the sake of argument, if I reluctantly believe that male gamers harass female gamers, opening doors to female only esports would mean that more women would go for such events. If they want to, it's their decision. However, that means that those harassers are still there in the community and if they won't be harassing women, they will harass other male gamers with their attitude and conduct. Instead of creating a women-only eSport event, developers and game publishers need to work closely with eSport organizers to offer more security to gamers who attend and participate while employing strict measures in tackling such abusive behavior. There have been instances in the past where professional gamers lost sponsorships because they ended up saying something on their live streams that was culturally or racially offensive. So it's not like people are not getting banned, they are. Such rules are in place to make esports more fun by getting rid of potential problem makers. Number 3. How would you define harassment and bullying? Some people define harassment as threats, while others define harassment and bullying as simply disagreeing with their opinions. Take a look at Anita Sargazian and Sargon of a card incident that took place at VidCon. If you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos. Anita 
Sita called Sargon a garbage human being while she was addressing the crowd as a panelist. One may argue that Sargon should not have attended her panel in the first place, considering, you know, in the past he made videos on debunking feminism and Anita Sarkeesian's view of video games and pop culture. But that is also a prime example of a woman, in this case Anita Sarkeesian, stepping out of her protective shell, out of her safe space, in a public environment where there is a high possibility that she might have to rub shoulders with her critics, with her fans, with her haters. And how does she respond? She completely flips out. It's pretty much the same thing. Instead of offering a level playing field, you're creating segregation in the community by offering a different platform to women. So what do you think will happen when these female gamers will try to enter a normal open to all genders esport competition? They will be out of their safe spaces and will be in a place that they might consider hostile. It is not fair on these women, nor it is fair on men who would have to put up with their entitled attitude. Number 4. In the article, it says that around 5% of eSport participants are women. Do you not think that creating a women-only eSport event is disrespectful to women that enter these events and not only put up with the so-called harassment but combat it by displaying the superior gaming skills. Of course it is. Another interesting point in the article was the paragraph, despite being able to compete on an equal playing field with men, only 5% of eSport players are women. This is often chalked down to the major earning gaps between men and women as well as the online bullying women in games often endure. Call me a skeptic or a misogynist, whatever you want to call me, but this sounds a lot like the feminist narrative that seems to play a lot on a regular, regular basis on Tumblr and YouTube nowadays. I'm going to go through the entire paragraph piece by piece to debunk it. Despite being able to compete on an equal playing field with men, only 5% of eSport players are women. This right here is misrepresentation of information at its finest. According to Christina Hoff Summers, a factual feminist who proved that video games do not cause violence or misogyny, quotes a research conducted by UCLA in one of her videos that male gamers outnumber female gamers to 7 to 1. So basically there's a 7 to 1 ratio between male gamers and female gamers. Researchers at UCLA, they have been studying the pastimes of college freshmen for more than 40 years. Well, for incoming freshmen, 2013, 65% of the girls, but fewer than 19% of the boys said they never played video games at all in a typical week. Now, among the hardcore gamers who play more than 20 hours a week, the ratio of boys to girls is about 7 to 1. When you take that number into account, women only making 5% of eSport players seems to make sense, especially when you take into account that not everyone breaks into eSports as a very competitive industry. This is often chalked down to the major earning gaps between men and women as well as the online bullying women in games often endure. A lot of people don't realize it but women on average make more money via Twitch donations when compared to men. This is why we have seen the rise of so-called boob streamers. And as far as actual tournament money is concerned, this point here is completely rubbish. I have not seen a tournament winner to win less money just because she's a woman. If an individual wins the tournament, they get the prize. I have never seen an event go, hey, you're a woman, you get $5,000 instead of $10,000. Many eSport players do not go in as individuals but rather as clans. So when the pot money is won by a clan, the money gets split. Whether the money is split unevenly among the players is something that is down to the clan itself, not the awarding bodies. Another thing which I would like to mention here is that many esports are covered widely by media over internet and often sees endorsement by brands like energy drinks, gaming setups, etc. 
If such gender pay disparity existed, do you think those companies would continue to endorse such events? Take a moment to think about the answer. And as far as online bullying is concerned, that is also a misconception that is widely spread. Gaming is the only industry that does not reward you for your skin color or gender identity. As long as you're good in a game and has a decent internet connection, nobody cares who you are. The article spews more feminist propaganda at you as it goes on by claiming how misogynistic gaming community is but gamers but gamers know how inclusive this industry really is i'm proud to be a gamer i do not condone violence bullying or harassment on any level and i'm also proud to know that the majority of gamers out there feel the same way anyways that's all for today i really hope you liked the video um, I know my views, you're not going to agree with everything I said, but if you have a different opinion, please let me know in the comment box below. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. Hit the bell icon in the, I don't know, top right or top left corner. Uh, hell, I don't know. There's a bell icon somewhere in the video, in on the channel, dude. Just hit it. Um, that's all for today. I hope you have a great day and peace out.